But speaking of those, let's get into the first clip and check it out. So, like I said, we're talking about the as the title of the sh of the um, episode, right? Why do black women make dating so difficult nowadays? Now, again, I can say all, I mean, women in general, right? But again, like, I date predominantly black women. I, I don't know how, have you dated women outside your race? Um, no, I haven't. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, so yeah. on this, on, on this show, on this panel, two men have dated predominantly black women. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again. You could say this for any woman, right? So I'm not, but I'm just like, I guess I'm shoot me if you want. I'm just making it a little bit more uh, controversial. But this is what I'm saying. I honestly believe that black women have. Let me let me clarify, right? Internet, internet, black women, right? I'm not gonna be such a do such a blanket statement, but. I want to be a little bit more precise, especially internet black women, right? Women that um, chronically online making these videos or women that make these comments on these videos, right? These internet black women. Those are the women, right, that are making dating difficult. So we're going to see how it is, right? Let's take this first, check this first clip out. To know why black men make dating so difficult they make it more difficult than any other societal group on this planet i feel like of course there are the outliers but as a group as a collective they're the most hard-headed to deal with when it comes to dating relationships commitment like all that stuff and i am just curious as to why i feel like it could all really be so simple and i know that because i've seen it be simple with other types of people but when you're dealing with a black man they make you go through hoops and loops just to ultimately end up with nothing like i really want to know what happens to black men specifically that caused them to have so much like anguish about being in a relationship or being committed like i really don't see how it's that big of a deal to be committed to somebody they're the main ones to not tell you their true intentions they're the main ones to lead you on they're the main ones to play gay. And then me being one of the ones who's only attracted to black men, it's really tough because there's not much to work with. And it's really frustrating for cause them to be so standoffish towards relationships and commitment. I, I really want to know. I don't know. Maybe it is time to expand my horizons and see what the other races have to offer because this is just not it. Now, I have a lot to say, right? Okay. Uh, before I mean, before I say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give it to you. But this is the thing, right? I'm gonna before I'm gonna before I give it to you, I want to say this, right? You or a lot of my friends, right, are reasons why <clears throat> I don't give any credit to these women. Okay, men like you, men like like James. Okay, they show me differently. You know. They show me why these women are liars, okay? These women are hypocrites. These women are delusional. I know black men that don't fall in this, and I'm gonna go in deeper about it when I when I when I really talk about it. But like I said, my friends show me differently. That's why I have something to say about women like this, right? That's why I said the chronically the, these. Internet black women, okay. That's their. This is their delusion because I know black men specifically that don't fall into this thought pattern that these women try to spew, and a lot of women online agree with. So, how about what's your thoughts? I think she has a point. So. What I, what I think happens, what I think is happening, what I think is happening in her case, the men she is attracted to are very attractive men. It's the same thing that it, it happens to us too, right? Very attractive women. We all go after them so we know they have their pick, right? 
and 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 very attractive men know that they have their pick. So I, so it's like it's like at a but you're at a buffet and you're like, yeah, I want this, but you're not gonna pick that and be like, I'm gonna stick with this the whole time because I got a buffet. So I'm gonna top, try this a little bit and then I'm gonna try something else. And there are a lot of guys and women who are like that. And I think she may be running into guys who are like that. I don't think it's the majority of men. But this is another thing. I, I don't I, I hope I'm not stepping on your toes when I say this. I, I'm I might actually want to say this in response to whatever you're about to say next, but I'll but I'll say I'll put out there anyway. I think that we take sometimes we take our own bad experiences, or we take the worst examples or the most toxic examples, and we say, This is what y'all are like. And it's not true, but it works because we're not all toxic, but we're not, we're not all perfect either. And a lot of us share one, may share one or two qualities with somebody like, with somebody toxic, <laughs> right? So like, I'm, I think I'm a good dude, but if you put like, like the worst, the most toxic guy, and these are all his qualities, one or maybe two of those, uh, I have a tendency to, you know, make the same kind of mistakes. So like, see, you're just like him. I'm not just like him, but we might have some things in common and that's unfortunate. So, so now all men are there. All men are like this. All men aren't like, that. I don't even think the majority of men are like that, but, but she's running into men like that. And a lot of them are the ones who, who know that they can, they can get what they want when they get it. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. It, it sucks that that's her experience, but I don't think that the, and she may, and she may find somebody really nice outside of her race, but I don't think the problem is that black men are like that. I think that that's been her experience with who she picks. Okay. So here's my thing, right? She's a hundred percent wrong. Okay. I mean, I get what you see. This is the thing where what you said uh -huh. is it, it's it, it's kind of like she makes it seem like she's hundred percent wrong, right? Here's the thing where I, I wanna I want to educate you and clear make make things a little bit more clear. Okay, it's a difference between men and women. Okay, men yes, men men yeah, men will go for attractive women. Okay, men mm -hmm. are not stupid with that, but they also know that a lot of times. Men can put women into a category. Okay, let's say this attractive woman, she's so attractive, but everything else about her is shitty. She's only for sex. Okay, I want to see her as a sexual partner. Let's say this other woman, right? She's not that attractive, but like everything else about her is perfect. She's going to be a relationship thing. Okay, that's a lot of men, right? Where they think that, yes, men can see, oh, men, can't, men do go for attractive women and they're toxic. But men can know that a lot of times, He's only using her for sex. He only cares about her for sex. That's a lot of times. But this is the difference, right? But the, the true difference, okay? At the end of the day, women are gatekeepers to their bodies. So it's who they allow in. Right? And in essence, women don't allow... I mean, they're, they, they're very selective, at least. I guess not. Uh, kind of, but they don't allow every man in. So really, you can't say black men this because you don't allow every black man into your life, let alone into your body. Okay. Here's the thing: where what you like the things you're saying. No man is perfect. No man is perfect. Okay. But this is the thing where I said you're wrong. Is that yes, it's her experience, but again, no man is perfect. I see because the things where I said, like, I see you, and I'm not saying that you're perfect, yeah. You're short, you're not <laughs> that, you're that good looking, but it's like this is but this is the thing where where I where I put what qualities do matter. That's why I, this is what I see, right? It's the person, the morals, the characters, the values, principles, right? The work ethics, all these things that honestly I feel sad is that women like this 
and well, well, I'm not saying it's specifically her, but women like this don't have good fathers, nor do they have. And again, I'm not saying just her. I'm not saying her, but I'm saying in general, women like this shows you that they don't have good fathers or fathers at all in their life. Because this is the thing where I honest, good fathers, right? Because there are bad, plenty of bad ones. But good fathers will vet other men, not because of how, how tall he is or how good looking he is, you know, or how big his bank account is. No. They do it by what kind of man is he? Okay, does it does he want kids? Would he be a good father? Would he be there for his kids? Would he be there for his wife? Does he want to marry? All these things that actually make a lot uh, make a long term relationship. Okay, this is what this is what I'm talking about, right? And I and again, I see a lot of this is where I said, right? You have to reevaluate. No, she is 100 percent wrong because it's the men. And the few, the few select men, okay, that she interacts with, right? This is the thing, right? Most women, and I'm not even talking about sex, okay? But most women have relationships, okay, with, let's say, I don't know, five to ten men in their life. And that, that's that's a lot, okay? But let's say, let's let's even, let's widen that gap. Let's say just men, she, men, women interact with in their life. Let's say uh, and meaningful, not just one night stands, right? But meaningful interactions, maybe fifty, maybe a hundred men. But there are millions of men on this planet. Okay, so this is the problem, right? Women don't interact with enough men. This is the thing. And I can say this, right? Most women interact with the same man. All right? That's the thing. That's the thing where you interact and you interact and you're attracted to the same type of men. Right? Because a little while ago, there was a uh, a um, stat, okay? Uh, kind of like an article saying that most men are single. While most women are not, that that should that should make you think. Why was that? Why is that? Why would you think that is? Why are most men single while most women are not? So what's interesting about that is that would mean that men greatly outnumber women. No, wouldn't it? And I said and they don't. Okay. And they don't. Okay. And men don't. Right. And let's say, uh, I'll be more specific. Let's say age demographic, uh, 18 to, let's say, 30, okay? Uh, that demographic, right? So what do you, how would you take a correlation to that? Um, I don't know. Women pick the men they like. Let me, let me help you out with that, right? Okay. What you should think about is that, one, they're probably dating mo multiple men. They're probably dating multiple men. Okay. Two, they're probably dating older men. Okay. This is the thing, right? Women are hyper selective, and men that that they give, I don't know, relationships to. So, women like this, who loves, who complains about men, she doesn't like. This is the thing, right? If she she walks. If you're in the same room with her, she doesn't even notice you. And this is the thing with a lot of women. Most men will be invisible to them. Okay? You're invisible. Women will be a man that works at CVS. Uh, a man that's behind the cash register at McDonald's. Uh, the UPS driver. The mailman. Uh, the guard. Whatever. All these men are invisible to women. That's the thing. Okay? That's the that's that's the that's the main issue where most men are invisible to most women. The only way you'd be uninvisible is like either you're top top tier man or you're mad ass creepy, right? And because you're 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 bothering her, you're being a creep towards her. That's how she notices you, but notices you in a bad way. Right? Uh -huh. Those are the those are the two ways that 
not get you noticed by women. Where you're a top percent man, you know, you're charming, you're good looking, or you know, whatever. You, your persona is really different, or you're creepy. <laughs> most men, most men are not the top men, and I honestly believe most men are not creepy. Okay, so this is the thing where a lot of women suffer from. Where and this is why I go back to why I said what I said at the beginning, where because men like you, men like James, right, and other all of our friends that how I see it differently. Okay, the sad part is, like, look at this, right? You've done like now you I don't know, I, I guess you kind of give up or you're not even trying anymore, maybe because and maybe in my view is probably because of the unsuccessfulness of it that you gave up. It's my view, but but those are the things where women like this they don't see the good black men, okay. And the problem is right with her mentality, right? Let's because at, at the end of the day, right, women are attracted to what they're attracted to. So yeah. even if they change race, most likely they will yeah. still be attracted to the same archetype of man, right? So let's say let's say a black woman is attracted to six. Over six foot man, right? Six two, whatever. Well, okay. If she goes to an Asian man, a uh, white man, whatever, she she still be attracted to a tall white man, a tall Asian man. Okay, not necessarily because he changed his skin. She will be different into her um, the type that she's attracted to. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily work like that. So a lot of times, that's a problem with a lot of women. It's not about the, the the type of man. I mean, it's not about the race of a man you you're interested. No, in. yeah, I agree. It's the type of man. Okay, that's the problem. Women don't necessarily change the type of man they're interested in because I've seen it a lot of times. It's a cycle with women. Right? It's a cycle. Oh, why is every man I date an, an abuser? Because that's the one you. That's the type of man you're attracted to, right? It's a cycle. Why do you like at the end of the day, right? Men, men shoot their shot at all, like practically all women, and see whatever lands. Women are selective, right? They're selective. So really it's like a dozen of men could shoot their shot at them, but only one man will be successful at it. While men will shoot a shot at a dozen women, who knows if he's successful at that, right? So she chose the man that's successful. And that man's successful, right? Well, those type of man will always be successful because that's her type. And that's who she allows in. So these men that she allows in, well, they, they added these trauma onto her, right? These bad relationships and all that shit. So now she says, men, men, men are terrible. Why did black men? No, not black men. Just the men that you're attracted to, regardless of their skin tone. It's the men that you're attracted to is the problem. And women don't understand, like, oh, I like because women, in my all honesty, women rarely ever uh, change their type. You know, it's like one minute, then they're not like they like it. Oh, I love skinny guys. Next minute, I love big guys. Rarely, if ever, that happens. So, okay. I'm going to respond. First, let me amend my statement. Yes, she is completely wrong. It's not a race thing. I see why she feels that way because she's attracted to black men and she's attracted to a type of man that has some has unfavorable traits. I agree. In, in any race, you can find the type of man she's attracted to and they're probably the same type of man to do a wrong or cause difficulty. And that's a shame. Um... I don't think it's about, I mean, physical attraction is important. I don't think it's all about physical attraction. I think some women are attracted to certain types of personalities. Yeah, I'm just talking about type in general, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, and, and, but that's what I think the, the, probably the problem is with her or with some women. I, all of us have this problem to an extent. I hear you that people don't really, that women don't really change the type they're attracted to. I don't think anybody really does, I, but you can. I, I, pull, I think I can pull back. I mean, I think I could uh, fight you on that statement. Okay. Well, what, well, what I was going to say is, 
I think you can rearrange your priorities to find somebody who's right. She could, for instance. So I bet you, um, and I mean, we're just we're just guessing because she didn't really say a lot in that video, and we don't know her. But I I would guess that on her priority list of who she's attracted to, some some qualities like like swag, right, is <laughs> is, a, is is a lot higher on the list where it should be. Um, maybe when it comes to like sensitivity or openness or responsibility, there probably something she could switch. And if she made if she made the, the better trait a, a more of a priority, she start to find better men. You hit the nail on the head. Okay. <laughs> this is the thing. This is the problem with all women. Okay. All women. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing where I've said it dozens of times. Uh -huh. Where do you think charm comes from? You aren't <laughs> born with it. Right? The <laughs> men that are top charming, right? And not just charming, but working charming, where it actually works. The mm -hmm. success rate is higher than the failure rate okay. with that charm. Okay? okay. Uh, it comes from practice. And that practice comes from talking and being successful with a lot of women. So here's the thing with a lot of women, right? You are charmed. And again, it goes with the bad boys, the players, the Chads, the Tyrones, top tier men. Okay. And you got to think, right? What When women think top tier men, oh, think about men that makes a lot of money. No, it's not just that. Top tier, especially when it comes to dating. Is that men just have high success rates? Okay, these are top tier men. They have high success success rate. So that could include a lot, a range of a lot of things, right? But a lot of these men who have high success rate is that they're charming. They are socially calibrated. They know how to talk to women, right? They know how to interact with women. Sadly, they know how to play the game, right? They know how to manipulate women because they're used to it. Okay? They know what works and what doesn't. They don't come off creepy. That's the thing. Okay, and that's this is the thing where women understand. She said, "Oh, oh, they don't know. Uh, they're not monogamous, or they don't know if they're committed." Well, girl, these men that you're attracted to, most women are attracted to him too, right? Just imagine an athlete, right? And this is why I go back to what I've said before, right? How I'm not saying athletes are cheaters, but I'm saying athletes have the propensity to cheat more likely than other men. Because, and I'm not saying because they're charming, but I'm saying like they, when you have more options, there's a higher chance. And again, this is not foolproof. This is not 100%. It depends on the man. But at the end of the day, even if you are the most faithful man in the world, when you have hundreds, thousands of women literally kneeling at you, begging to for you to take off their pants, it is you're 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 godly, you're saintly for resisting it. Okay, and even I, and that's what I'm saying. Even good men, I'm not saying that it's impossible to resist, but I'm saying even good men can fall for that shit. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Where if even a good man can fall for dozens of women wanting to be with him, imagine a man that's average. Uh, and I'm saying like average where he's neither good or bad. How can you say that he can't, re I mean, he could resist, right? And I'm not saying that resist where he's cheating. Resist where, you know what? He probably won't commit to you because he doesn't want to cheat, right? He doesn't want to cheat, but he also doesn't want to commit because there's plenty. This is the thing, right? Top tier men are rare, regardless. That's just how the world is. It's a sad fact that you know men, the highly desirable men, are rare. Plain and period. So those men are rare. Pretty women are not. And because you think, right? Most women are pretty to most men. So really, that that that's just a fact, right? 
I mean, you have to be like really at the low tier of, you know, unattractiveness to be not good looking to no man. But that's what I'm saying. Most women are good looking to most men. It's not the opposite, right? This by statistics, right? Most men are ugly to most women. And that's that's science, right? Or that's a study. There's, they, they've done a study on that, where most women, at least on dating apps, find most men unattractive, right? So that tells you something, where most men are not really that attractive to women. So, you know, again, that's, that just shows you another thing where top-tier men are highly desired. And this is the thing where women don't understand. It's not men that's the problem. It's men that you're into that's the problem. And you you think, right? This is the thing where women don't understand. And you you kind of touched on it, right? Yes, mm -hmm. they, they put their own personal experience and labor label it as men. And that's the that's the ridiculous of it. Okay. That's the ridiculous of it. Because this is the difference between, let's say, men doing the same thing, right? The yeah. problem is that men can cast a wider net than women. I can go for a woman that's slightly chubbier, a woman that's not or kind of skinnier, because in my view, right, men can fluctuate when it comes to what they find beautiful, right? But women, it's usually, and a lot of women, they share that, right? Because that's why you think a lot of men are baby daddies to a lot of women, Right, because they share a lot of women. This is the this is the thing where a lot of like a lot of men good because the top tier men are desired by a lot of women. So a lot of women they are saying, oh, men are this. Well, and then another woman said men are that. Well, a lot of times those women are sharing the man, sharing the same men are in the same group. Right. So really, when you when your pool, your dating pool is so small. You don't really have much, you can't much to say because your pool does not equate to a larger ocean. Right? And that's the thing. That's the that's the I think that's the key difference in when what men say and then when what women say. Because men cast a wider net. So a lot of things they say kind of equates to uh I'm not saying all women, but maybe majority of women. While what women say, what they say is like a small percent of men. Now, I mean, from your, this might not be totally related, but just from your point of view, do you agree that a woman should be selective? Like, is it that kind of how it's, how it's supposed to be? I do. I do agree a woman should be selective. I've never, uh, I'm not stupid, right? At the end of the day, she should be selective because that's great. I mean, that's how science is. A man is entering her. She's not entering a man. She has the risk of pregnancy, you know, her body, her health being affected. So, yes, she should be selective. But don't fool yourself in thinking that it's men. No, it's your selectivity. It's who you select, right? And it's a small percent of who you select. That's the issue I have, right? Men say it's what men say is different when what women say because their antidote is such a small percent of men. Let's say this, right? A lot of women say men are violent, men are criminals, right? Men are abusive, men are and you you talk about this kind of right where men are the violent ones or they are the uh DVs, right? They they're the ones who do it. But statistically, okay, I think in a year's time, I, I think there's about 400,000 cases. And those cases, it both includes men and women as victims. And those cases include a wide range of levels of abuse. So it's not to say that's not to say it's not just sexual abuse, right? So it's a wide range of abuse. Like I may have touched her inappropriately or like grabbed her hand and shit like that. Okay. So, but that's the thing where I'm saying, like, let's say that percentage, like that's how, and this is again, just off the top of my head, nothing's precise. Okay. 
that 400,000. 400, well, I also, I just recently Googled, you know, how many men are in the U.S., 160, over 160 million men. So that 400 case a year, right? And let's, let's not forget that a lot of cases, it's the same person, same perpetrator doing it to multiple people. That's a lot of cases, right? You, you, if you're if you're an abuser, you usually just don't abuse one person. You it's just who you are. You abuse multiple. Um, but that is a small percent of men, right? That's a small percent of men. So when you say that, oh, it's not all men, but you know, if you, it's barely barely any kind of men. I mean, it's like from that, it's like. 1% of men, I think, if I'm doing my math correct, but I'm not good at math, but it's like under 5% of men, if if that. So really, it's like, it's barely anything. So I, I, don't, I don't totally, I don't really disagree with you, but I challenge you on that a little bit. I hear you what you're saying about women having a, a, a smaller pool of experience because they're very selective about who they are attracted to but when it comes to things like maybe not full-on violence or abuse but like women women don't choose to interact with a lot of men but women do interact with a lot of men or a lot of men interact with women Sometimes it's not even their choice. And that's a large amount. Um, so when women, so as far, when it comes to, to, I won't say, I won't say labeling men as abusers, but. I, I think I kind of, I can't, I, I kind of see what you're going for. Yeah. But you have to understand, right? The caveat is that, let's say with the abuse thing, a lot of times it comes from someone you already know. That's most cases. It's not strangers, not just man on the street abusing a woman. No, it's usually man you know. So let's, let's say this, right? And I, I, this is where I'm saying, it's usually the man that that woman chose. That's the thing. It's usually the man that that woman chose to be with. That he's the abuser. Okay. And I and I don't condone it. It's not about me condoning it, but me. This is this. This is me where I hold it. And this is where I've gotten in trouble a lot of times, right? Is that, and they call me victim blaming and shit like that. But it's like, at the end of the day, okay? We all have to take accountability for our actions. If it was a stranger abusing another stranger, yeah. What what could you do? What could you do? Really nothing, right? They're a stranger. And you just randomly... Did something bad to you, but yeah. Yeah, statistically, it's not the case. Statistically, it's someone you know, someone close to you. And when it comes to a lot of times with women and men dynamic, it's usually the man that. And, and okay, right? Like I said, it's usually not one way. Here's the thing: where I, I was, I saw this um, uh, this you know, uh, story and stuff like that, right? We only see the outcome, the results, okay? We don't see the, the situation. So imagine this, right? Yes, hypothetically. And again, I'm not saying that I'm condoning it. But we forget what leads to it. Because what I heard, and again, I'm, I don't know the science. I don't know the study and stuff like that. But a lot of times, domestic violence is usually towards women towards men. Because this is the thing where we don't understand, right? And violence is also, or domestic abuse is also verbal abuse. Lots, and again, men have the, the 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 propensity for violence, right? They they have the inclination. So, and I'm, I don't condone it, but a lot of times women abusing men verbally, some or sometimes taking it out physically on that man because oh they think they're women, so they can hit man, they can throw something. At a man and all the shit. And then a man can't stand it and he let loose. And the result 
All the thing the police only talk about is that his what he did, not what came, not not what caused it. That's a lot of things too. We, we we don't think about because I told you my story right about my girlfriend how we were arguing. Okay, she threw a book bag at me with the laptop in it. So really, it's like, and I and I don't condone what I, because I said that that changed my mindset. Right where yes, I got physical and I didn't hit her. I pushed her, but pushed her so hard that left a that she fell back and left a dent in the wall. And I, you know all these other stuff I, I said in another pod. But again, we forget that it's a lot of times because we only care about the results, and usually the result is the man, you know, physically abusing her. But we forget about what what uh, the process of letting it to that result. Okay, I've seen usually when. And I think this is I think this is common when domestic violence is not just one on the other. It's both. Okay. Both people are toxic towards each other. It just so happens that, and I said it before too, I said this plenty of times. When men are emotional, that's the bad part. Because men come with the physicality of it. The strength with it. So that I've said, I, you know, I've said this in past things, which please check it out. Problem with men, when they're emotional, they come with strength. Okay. And strength that is more fearsome than women's strength. But that does not negate that women are abusive. Okay. A lot of times in abuse, and this is my opinion, right? In a in toxic relationships, both parties are toxic. Both both parties are terrible. Both parties are terrible to each other. It just so happens, that, like I said, the result that you know what, when men are terrible, well, it comes with the physical strength, and that's that's the sad part. That's the that's the thing that we only hear about. But this is what I'm saying, like. Again, right? We got to take account. I think both parties to take accountability because a lot of times women do not understand the emotional abuse that they can do, right? How they can hurt a man into being toxic himself, right? Being overly emotional and then getting physical, and that's the thing where I, I want to say that like you know what, we we don't we don't talk about that enough. And that's the problem with a lot of these relationships where, again, it is who you chose. You chose to be with this man. Okay? At the end of the day, I feel bad as, as it is, right, And when it comes to any kind of violence. But, again, I've always said this before that women, people, always ignore red flags. Right? So you chose this man. And you know what? He maybe had like, I don't know, sometimes I think maybe anger issues or he, he he's rude or he's or whatever. But you see these things, you continue being with him. So no duh that, you know what? It may ended how and violently. Do you think in every instance those red flags show themselves? And the reason I ask is because we were just talking about charming men. Learn to be that way through practice, right? They get really good at it. So, do you think it's very easy to see? Okay, th th those I think those are kind of two different questions, right? Okay, okay. I'm not saying they're easy to see. I mm -hmm. agree. I'm saying that they're always there. That's okay. why I say, right? There will always be red flags. They're just not easy to see, and depending on the person, they will make it hard. Okay. But they're not easy to see. I agree. I, I, I do understand that. And I, I, I recognize that. But this is a thing. Okay. This is the part where time is important. Right. Where you're not being stupid. You're being logical. And you're. And this is the thing. Right. This is the part where, where I was talking about betting. Right. This is the thing where if you had a good father. If you had an active father. If you had a good brother, you know, good these men, other men relationships, right? And 
men relationships where they not actively want to have sex with you. You know, they're they're unbiased. Well, well, not unbiased, but they're they're not actively. They they will make an effort to care about your well being. Okay, and this is the thing where women are stubborn. They don't care about other people's opinion. They will do things that they will do and get the outcomes they will get. Okay, so I think I have two questions. Uh, all right, well, one statement. I hear you about, um, I, I do think that if a woman has good men in her life, good fathers, brothers, friends, they should give her an example of what. Oh, of, I won't be controversial. If you have a single mother, you're effed. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you well, most likely repeat her same mistakes. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> but continue. Not no. All right. All right. Uh, but but I, I want to ask you this. What does everything we talked about, what does that mean for men? For instance, we just watched this clip of this girl. She said, black men, they, 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 said they have all these problems. They make dating so difficult, right? I think we both agree that's not the case that, that, that black men aren't that way. I don't think I'm that way. No. What should I do? Okay. Here's my advice to men that... I believe, are, and these are good men, right? Morally sound men. Men that stand by their principles. Men that live by their principles, right? Uh, they want commitment, okay? They are, and these, like I said, these are good men. What you should do, stand by your principles, your standards, your preferences. Continue being the best version of yourself. At the end of the day, right? We could. Like I said, right, I've said this before. All you can do is control yourself. That's it. That's the only thing you can do. Only thing in life you can do and have control over is yourself. So that in mind, stay by your standards. Stay by your principles. Continue to be and strive for the best version of yourself. Excuse me. Okay. To be the best version of yourself, you know, look at this, right? And who knows if it happens? I'm not saying it will. But what I want to do is, right, continue to invest, continue to save, continue to try to grind and make this channel as big as it can be and grow my self-value, right? Where whether other people see the value or not, that's that's their that's their thing, but grow the value in what I see in myself. Okay, if I see that you know what I have a a, a net wealth that I think is good, uh, if and I stick, I still have the morals and principles and you know standards that I have that I think are good as a good man. I I don't promote cheating. I'm not into cheating. I, I like I like monogamy. Uh, Whatever, right? My own moral values. At the end of the day, when you think that, okay, I'm in a, uh, I'm in, and again, let's put also things that where have, have things more than just women. Okay. My thing is like this channel. I have this channel. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a friend. You can see I have geeky shit. Okay. Yeah. I love, I love investing. I, I love saving. You know, I love this channel. You know, shit like that I'm saying, right? Because these are the all these things I'm saying is part of me being the best version of myself. That's part of it, right? You have writing, you have your job, you know, you you want to improve yourself, right? These are the things where we are all trying to be the best version of ourselves. And that's what you can do. That's the best thing you can do. Where, you know, a revenge and not necessarily revenge, but let's say revenge on women. Is that you know that you are the best. So look at like if I look at this, right? Look at this woman that she was complaining. I'm thinking about let's say for you, right? Because she said she only wants black men, right? But if I'm saying, like, if I look at you and 
hypothetically, I'm you. If I'm at the best version of myself and this woman's complaining, I was like, hell with her. Because she's the one who's at loss. Because although I may not be her attractive um, once, but I'm the type of man that she says she wants. And if I know I'm here, she doesn't want me, well, heck with her. No wonder she's a complaining. No wonder she's suffering from it. Okay. And this is the thing where, you know, men got to understand, right? Because at the end of the day, what's women providing? For for modern day men, right? This is not men like your, your fathers, your grandfathers, your great-grandfathers. We're cooking for ourselves. We have roof over us, our own heads. We're making our money for ourselves. We're, we're having hobbies. We're having other avenues where job is not everything. You know, it's not the only thing. We have other avenues to sustain our lives, to fulfill our life. Okay, just like women say that men are not everything. Well, men can say the same thing. Okay, and that's the thing. That is the best version. That's the best thing men can do for themselves. Again, to improve yourself for yourself. Okay, and continue to strive for better. I I, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, I guess I have like I had another question. All right, I asked you this before, or I asked you a version of this question before, kind of. I just framed it a certain way. Okay, so this woman we just watched a clip of, if she were your friend, what would you tell her to do? Get outside your comfort zone. Okay. That's, uh, this is, that, that's the thing. A lot of women, right? That's a problem with a lot of women. I've said it. I said it a while ago. They repeat their cycle, constantly repeat their cycle, right? Oh, I'm attracted, and I only I only give the example because it's easiest. Like I only like tall men. Well, mm -hmm. okay, and then I'm and you're complaining every time. So wouldn't that at the end of the day, the only common denominator is you, because you're picking the same type of man every time. That's the same common denominator. You picking the same type of man. Now. I have yet to hear or see a woman that dated all, truly all, because like women are delusional in that park, right? Mm -hmm. They say they dated all types of men, but mm -hmm. seriously, have you not? Because what they say, all type of men, they're usually talking about uh, one, broke or rich men, which is stupid, Congrats. or two, different races of men. But still, this is what women don't understand, right? Even if he's the same different race, Let's say, hypothetically, they're all tall. It don't matter about the race when you still pick the essentially the same type of man in whatever race. Colors, right. <laughs> yes, it don't matter, right? Type is personality, right? Let's say one man's a geek. One man's a jock. Uh, one man wants monogamy. The next man doesn't. One man, this inside is what makes a man the type, Okay. That's the main type, right? Now, again, you could say that, oh, I did a skinny man, fat man. Okay, that's a little bit more. But again, it's inside that truly makes them the type. And that's what women don't grasp. Because women generally base their attractiveness on money and looks. That's the thing, right? Men base their, how they do things is really like what I can get for sex and what I can get for a long-term relationship. Those are usually the difference with men. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I think we covered our bases. Um, yeah. Okay, let's try this other clip. Cool. Hi, I have an answer. And it's simply because they don't have money. So I've been thinking about this a lot as it relates to my personal dating life. Um, a lot of my friends who are black women who are in their late twenties, early thirties, who have been struggling with dating, who prefer to date black men, and have been doing it in comparison to my. Before we continue, right? Imagine these two women. <laughs> Literally, and this is—I mean, to be honest, right? If I was a black man, uh -huh. I would be beyond disrespected. Yeah. Okay. Literally one saying black, and this is like, you you might as well just say all black men, 
don't want monogamy. All black men are poor. Basically, this is what they're saying. And this is why I had to correct you, right? And saying that the last woman's wrong. Because this is what they're saying. All black men don't want monogamy. And it's not true because, again, I have friends that are not like that. And then this woman already started off black men are poor. White peers. Infinite peers out of like other races, but specifically my white peers, as to why we all went to similar schools. Um, we all went to similar schools. We all have similar educational backgrounds. We all work similar jobs. Um, for bar for bar, we would say we would live very similar lives, except I just oscillate in primarily black spaces and they oscillate in primarily white spaces. Um, with that said, I think it's because white people, but specifically white also men, are raised in a way that they have generational wealth, but a generational wealth mindset, meaning that they saw their parents get paired off and married, you know, within their 20s. They have grandmas ring and heirlooms. They have a house that they know that they will inherit. They have a mindset knowing that even if they um, even if they lose their job at Goldman Sachs or in tech or whatever, that they have this sort of privilege that they know that they'll always be fine and they know that they'll always be able to take care of their family. So even though they're in build mode, they're not necessarily worried that they would lose everything. And I think that mindset is different for Black men meaning that they spend a lot of their 20s and even in their early 30s really trying to play a game of like financial catch up, really trying to get themselves established. And because they're playing that game, they play games in other areas, meaning that they don't necessarily take things seriously in terms of getting married, having kids, buying a home, starting family, um, because those things require money. And if you don't have it, you're not they're not necessarily going to, um, I guess, just take those things seriously. And again, I was just really thinking as to like why I'm in my late 20s. A lot of my friends are in our late 20s to early 30s and we're still like dating and on dating apps and dealing with games and all the shenanigans that come with dating black men. But then when I look at the Jennies, the Tiffany's and the whatever's of the world, a lot of them who I have worked with or work with, why they all, ironically enough, got engaged all at 27, 28, um, around the same time. And it's about kind of like sorority-like, very systematic. Um, and again, it's that peer influence around them. If they see all their friends doing the things, and this goes for men too, they're gonna go do those things as well. If they saw their parents do it, they're gonna go do it as well. And I don't think black men saw it um from their fathers um and they also didn't necessarily and don't necessarily see it from their peers around them so they don't also feel kind of that social influence to do those things especially for black men in major cities like a new york a la a chicago um, a miami maybe even houston maybe in the south it might be a bit different um but yeah um there's more i can say on this and i've been doing a lot of research and actually going to write an article about it, um, just the differences and nuances between being a black woman dating versus like my white contemporaries and their dating experiences. But yeah, the one factor that it boils down to is money. And if you- This is the thing, right? If I was a black man, I would be so insulted. Right, I will find it such a disrespect. Because let's say this, right? Black men aren't the only ones growing up in those kind of households, the broken households. Black women are as well. So to say that oh, it's black men, no, because then you're you're shirking. Like I go back to what I said, right? All you can do is control yourself. But the, here's women, and I think this happens synonymously a lot with black women, is they shirk the responsibilities. That they have, okay. They shirk the responsibilities that they promote. That they 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 don't hold on. They don't take on the responsibilities of their own actions. Okay. I did. A, I have a video up where a woman saying that like she wouldn't put a man first because she would rather put children first than put a man first. Okay. That mentality shows you because that shows you that men are not that important. It goes along with um, 
women have said, and I think we did a video on it or something, maybe not, but where they 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 rather be baby mamas than wives because they find it harder to uh, deal with being a wife to a man, you know, catering to a man. How how to be a wife, right? This is this is yeah, this is the thing where with with black women not thinking about. You are shirking responsibility. Do you even know how to be a wife? Okay. Now let's take out men, right? Let's take out black men, right? How whatever they they don't know how to be husbands, but do you know how to be a wife? Were you raised to be a wife? She might as well say she wasn't. But they, they they don't they don't mention them. What they do is show they put the disrespect on men, particularly black men, right? But where's your onus? Where's where's the accountability? Because as black women, you weren't raised to be a wife. Because what you you can say that black men live in that kind of household. But what about your household? Were you raised to be a wife? No. Even in let's say hypothetically. And this is synonymous, and this is a sad part. Even if you, if even if you are raised by a mom and dad in a black home, what do they teach you? To be a strong, independent black woman, not to cater to a man, not to be a wife, not how to be a wife. That's not what happens. So this is the thing where you cannot just blame black men. Say black men, you about money? No, because because black men, right? Are looking about what are their options, right? What are the women out there? A lot of women or a lot of black women don't even want to be wives. They'd rather be baby mamas than wives. Why? Because you think about this. The one of the epidemics is baby mamahood in the black community. Okay. Women don't even require black men to marry them before having kids with them. That should show you one thing that they don't even care about being a wife. So, again, this is why I, I, where I support my black brothers because this is this in my view it is very disrespectful. Okay, and a lot, why a lot of times I said right, one of my most viral videos, you know, uh, about like black women seem to be the biggest haters of black men because stuff like this. Well, you don't see the hate, you don't understand the hate. Okay, because. She's not, she's putting, pushing this narrative about money. You do not have to have money to have a relationship, to get married to a black man. Yes, you can um, have money to buy houses and all that stuff. But like, you know what? You The change has to come somewhere. Yes, I, I get it, right? There is racial or history to it where there's not generational wealth. But at the end of the day, you have to make the change somewhere. Be the wife that a black man wants to have. But this is the thing where a lot of black women, they're so attitude prone. They're so independent. Okay. But here's my, here's the thing where I put in my situation. I've said it before. I date predominantly black women. My baby mom, who I would, and we were on the rocks, but I didn't want a broken family. She wouldn't have kids before the marriage, before marriage. Okay, because I wanted to wait, I wanted to get to know and all this stuff, but she wouldn't have kids because she has complications, so whatever it is what it is. But even after everything, I still wanted to marry her. She told me that she already has the kids. Why even get married? I'm like, what? I, I was like, and that's that's one of the things that showed me that well, you don't even love me. I mean, obviously, you don't love me because you didn't want that, right? And that I already knew that you didn't love me. But that's a that's a, like a nail in the coffin. And raised by a single mom, no duh, that that's her attitude in it, right? And it's just like, and again, I was holding down, sending money, being there for my kids, and all this shit. By the end of the day, she's a strong, independent black woman who thinks that she knows it all. It's her way, the highway. And again, I'm not I'm not trying to use my scenario. And a blanket statement of all women or all black women. But again, this ain't an echo chamber. I'm not this is not a lone thing. Okay. I don't know if you could agree to it. You probably not because I know you. But this is a something that a lot of black men are facing. And again, statistically, 
you see it like again with the marriage rates. I've said this to be to, to, to you before. Um before 1950s, black people had the highest marriage demographic out of all demographics. Okay. Now after that, they have the lowest. Okay. And you think about after the 1950s, that is the big boom. Okay. And the 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 epidemic of high um baby mama hood. Okay. That's the thing. I mean that's yeah, I mean there's a lot to go into there. Um as far as the <laughs> as far as the clip, I mean that hurt to hear. <laughs> really I'll I'll say this because even though it hurt, like I was listening to what she said because I didn't want to just be reactionary. There's yes, unfortunately in America there is a financial divide and it is true that black people, black men in a lot of instances have had to work harder to get what they have. It's not a reason why that doesn't, that certainly doesn't translate into a man being ignorant about how to, how to be in a relationship. It doesn't translate into a man, uh, playing games with a woman because like her, the way she connected them didn't make any sense. In reality, black men who work really hard to be financially stable are going to take into consideration I'll need money, yes, to take care of myself and my family. They take the, and and a lot of good men who take that seriously will put themselves in a position to be able to take care of somebody before they get into a relationship and may not get into a relationship until they know that they can take care of that person. So uh, that's not a bad thing. That's responsibility. Uh, she turned it into something else. So, no, I didn't like that clip. <laughs> um. And yeah, I I hear you about a lot of things you said. That's dis that's disturbing. Um, hmm. And this is the thing, right? Maybe help like get you help you get your thoughts together. This is the problem, right? Where again, not every not every white person, every white couple have generational wealth. No. Um, but this is the thing where almost it seems like. And internet black women, I want to clarify because I'm not trying to, you know, say all black women, but it seems like they equate men as money. Okay. It's like always money. It's always money. But this is the thing, right? It is 2024. There's two people. So two people will bring income. You know what the, the, the key thing is, right? A lot of women are hoping men will make more money. So they can, so women can do a lot less. That is the key, and that is the comparison they want to make with their white counterparts. Okay, but this is a thing where, where it's the problem of um, past generations. Okay, and like again, I'm not saying let's not negate, and I agree, not not negate the past, but when you live in the past. You won't change the future. This is the point where, let's say your white counterparts, their parents were together, their grandparents were together, and so on and so on. Whether they generational wealth or not, okay? But they decided to stay together. Sad part in the black community, your parents are not together, and then your parents' parents are not together, and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, you complaining and not making change yourself does not do nothing. Okay? It does not fix anything. And then you equate to men being, oh, if you don't have enough money, then... Girl, you should be working. It's a sample. Like I said, I've said this before. Being a stay-at-home mom is a luxury 
most people cannot afford. Okay? Most people cannot afford that. So, don't be selfish and work so you both can combine incomes and then buy a house together and then save together and invest together. But this is a thing where I'm sorry, but black women, internet black women are being poisoned by. Oh, my white counterpart, she can be a stay-at-home mom. Why can't I? Well, you ain't white. You don't live her life. But this is the thing where I'm sorry, but your parents and then their parents and so on and so on has done you dirty or, you know, didn't think about you. So the sad part is, or taking responsibility, is that now you need to think about your future generations. And this is the thing, right? This is the thing where, I don't know if you agree with me, but this is the thing with marriage. It's not about your own happiness. It's once you have once you have kids, it's about their happiness. And it's about your kids' kids' happiness. And it's about so on your gener your your true generations, right? If you cared, right? It's about you not thinking about yourself, your happiness, and getting with someone that's you know again, this is the part where you choose, right? There's plenty of black geeks, plenty of black nerds, plenty of black engineers, plenty of whatever. Not thinking about, oh, I want the I want the bad boys, I want the drug dealers, I want the thugs to become morally responsible, to become monogamous, and then get better jobs. No, that's not how it works. Choose better. And then don't think about your own happiness. I mean. Of course, you're not thinking about completely be miserable. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about be miserable and be with someone. No. But find someone that, you know what, can make you happy. No one's perfect. But can, you know, you can make yourself happy. The other person can contribute to your happiness. But, again, it's not your, your happiness is not the main concern. It's your family's happiness is. And that's the point. Where, sadly, okay, Sadly, this wasn't drilled into minority. Well, I won't be controversial. This wasn't drilled into black communities, at least not nowadays. I honestly believe what I said about the night before 1950s and stuff. I think it was then. I think it's not in modern day. It's not drilled I mean, to modern day black communities. I, hmm. it, it depends. I don't think in general, in general, you have the right mindset or online and <laughs> saying anything like that. Yeah. But also, man, that is a lot to go into. It's a lot to go into. <laughs> the, 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 the black, ah, uh, the makeup of the black family is a is a whole show topic, bro. Like, <laughs> it, it's a whole show topic. But um, so that we don't have to. I guess we don't have to go into it, but. We'll probably just more stick into the dating dynamic of it. Mm -hmm. But um, oh man, I don't even know. I'm 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 sort of whoo. You said a lot. I agree with you though. Marriage isn't isn't. I don't know if it's if it if it comes from watching like TV or whatever. Like those white couples, unless you get in their house and see how they work. I mean, if you if you want to be if you want to be a stay at home mom, I don't think that's a bad thing. Just understand that it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to find. It'll be it, it it won't be easy to find a man who can support a family without your income. It's possible, but not easy. Uh, don't if while you're having trouble finding that, don't put down the whole black race because that's that's not fair. And also understand that being a stay-at-home mom is work. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not you. I I don't know if they imagine that while their mate is is providing that they just get to stay home and spend it. Raising children is hard. Taking care of a home is hard. No, um, let, 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 let me tell you this, right? 
and here's the delusion of a lot of women is that they want to be stay at home moms, but they want to have the convenience of mo- of modern day, where they expect men to not just provide money, but be there for their kids and be there for the relationship and be there for the housework. That is the problem. That is the issue. Okay, that is the crux of it. Okay, they want modern conveniences or modern ideology with traditional values. That's the thing where it's the delusion. Okay, it's the perfection that you don't deserve, nor is it reality. And that's what a lot of women, especially stay at home moms, expect and they think, oh, you know what? Just because he's making the money doesn't mean that he should neglect his kids. Girl, well, then if you think that, then you should be making money too. Right? This is the thing where women where and again, a while back we did a we were talking about this video where it shows that men are the the saints and women are the sinners. Women are evil. Okay, <laughs> where they put this pressure on men, and a lot of times men will take it. Men will take it. Men will accept this pressure without saying shit. But sadly, they will not. They won't say shit until they explode. That's the problem, right? Where we 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 neglect old school stuff. Okay, we, we neglect old school mentality. A lot of men of old age they accept. Like this is why I said right. This is why I support men because men. Since the beginning of time has always been the underdog. Okay. We 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 accept that as men, we are expendable. We are the sacrificial lambs. We are what you know, we are the backbone of society. We accept being stomped on. Okay. But this is the thing, we're human. So a lot of times we only accept it until we can't accept it anymore. A lot of times when that happens, it's same thing with DV, domestic violence, it gets violent, right? The sad part is that men are humans. I honestly believe, okay, and I'm not excusing every single case or every man, but a lot of times we neglect the process. We only care about the result. A lot of times the result is like men being violent to women. We neglect what came before that. We don't care about the pressure that's on men's backs. We don't care. We don't care about the responsibilities that we put on men. We don't care. We only care if it affects women badly. But before that, we don't care. Right, we expect men to provide fully, only allow women to have jobs if they feel like it. We expect men to be there for their children. We expect men to provide for the household, cook if they you know cook, clean, uh, do chores, all stuff. We expect that. We expect the man to be a good husband, a tentative husband. And what for? What for a woman? Right. To be a mom to her to, to the kid she chose to give birth to, to have sex with, with him with her husband whenever she feels like it, if she feels like it. And then what? That's it. That's her that's pretty much her jux of her responsibilities, right? Clean when you know when she feels like it because oh, she's tired of raising kids that she chose to have. This is the thing where to be honest, it's not. This is not. It's not as um, amazing as people make it out to be, right? They 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 really put on such a heroic story for women, but it's not like that. It ain't. Not truly. Woo! <laughs> I'll say this. I think as as far as um. Like if, if I guess if, if you're a man, if you're a black man uh, looking for a mate, and I do believe that every relationship should be 
however you do divide up the responsibilities that are part of every relationship, it should be as close to 50-50 as possible for the work. Date, like, be with a friend. And 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 what I mean by that is, like, you can you can meet somebody, you you know, you can meet somebody new that you haven't interacted with before. Um, but I think all of us, we talked about how women do it. Men, when you make your priority list, and I know there's a list of things. Attractiveness is always high on the list because that's just it's natural to who we are. We can make sure we put other qualities higher on the list. But like when you date, I guess like when I get back into dating, I'm dating to find a friend or make a friend. Because when you have that type of relationship that you have with friends, one that where you where you can feel the other person really cares about you, a lot of that stuff goes out the window. You'll, you'll, you'll find somebody, if you find somebody who really cares about you, they want to do for you, right? You want to do for them, but they want to do for you too. So I think that's the best way to not find yourself in a relationship where one person is just expecting you to handle everything. Because a friend isn't going to be like that, right? They, like, like, and you're going to want to do for them, but they're going to want to do for you too. And you guys are going to care for each other. And, and I think that's, that's at the heart of making a relationship work because that's at the heart of people being willing to move as close to 50, 50 as possible. You marry a woman and, and she's, and you're going to let her be the stay at home mom, but she's your friend. She's going to be like, well, I want to, I want to make sure you feel good when you come home. Or if you guys are gonna, or if you guys both work, then you're both gonna share the home responsibilities, and nobody's gonna just put all the weight on the other person because friends don't do that to each other. So, I think that's gonna be harder than you think. I I <laughs> I'm optimistic, Dan, but I'm also not looking. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm saying I get it. <laughs> 